Thank you, Ranisha. Um, so when we're talking about the different models that humanitarians can use for procuring renewable energy, what we'll focus on in this presentation is how uh, this relates to more traditional purchase models, as well as finance options, and compare the pros and the cons of each model uh, with a particular focus on the technical and financial implications that this has for the organization. Um, so the presentation is based on a solar handbook that we published with the Moving Energy Initiative last year. Uh, and this is a handbook that has more details than, than what will be provided in this presentation. And you can find that on, on our website. Um, in the presentation, I thought I would start to say uh, two words about how this works relates to Cube Energy and the experience that we have had with the uh, establishing the, the company. So if you can go to the next slide. So we started working on Cube in 2016 with, and our basic goal when we started was to make it easier for humanitarian organizations to benefit from renewables by trying to remove some of the technical and financial constraints that was limiting the sector from transitioning away from diesel. So we were a small group of people that had our backgrounds from the humanitarian sector and had seen a lot of solar systems that had been stranded and stopped working for, for unknown reasons. And we had uh, seen how the limited investment capital had um, really limited the amount of or the scale uh, that the renewables was being used in the humanitarian sector. So in essence, we wanted to make it really easy for humanitarian organizations to acquire solar by uh, structuring a, uh, a service uh, similar to what a utility does uh, in, in a developed country uh, by selling electricity and supporting organizations throughout the whole process of the procurement from the first technical assessment of the compound to installation and operations and offering organizations to pay on a, a monthly basis. So if you go to the next slide. So to do this, we looked at models that were available in the commercial energy sectors and explored how we could tailor them for the humanitarian space. So in our minds, there were three main options that we thought were meaningful to discuss. The first was the traditional purchase option. The second was a, a leasing option. And the third was a power purchasing agreement or a PPA. So for the first option, uh, the, the purchase option, this normally entails that the organizations themselves identify their requirements they have for electricity and uh, make the design for a particular system. They would then tender this system and get bid from companies willing to supply the components and or install the entire system. The organization pays the full amount for the system at the commissioning and then the overall responsibility falls on the organizations to do the operations and, and maintenance of the system. So one of the big weaknesses that we saw with this model is that when there are problems with the system, uh, often the organizations struggle to identify what the problem is, if it's with the design of the system itself or with any particular uh, components. We've also seen that a lot of uh, organizations, even though they get a, a sort of very high end company to install the initial system, they use local electricians without the necessary qualifications to try to fix problems and uh, often with makeshift solutions. So the end result is that there are just a lot of, of solar systems that are not functional in, within the humanitarian space. Um, and I think we, we met a lot of skepticism among uh, people working in the humanitarian sector um, who think that the, the ability of, of renewable technologies is quite limited. Um, so so we, we've uh, tried to, to develop uh, other models that sort of would prevent some of these problems. And, and the second option that we see uh, as an attractive uh, way for humanitarian organizations to go is, is the leasing model. So the term leasing is applied to procurement where organizations will sign a contract for several years, normally five years and above. And when the organizations then get the uh, power from the, from the system that is installed on their compound and that the ownership of the system is eventually transferred to the organizations. So this is what we call a sort of a lease to own uh, model or um, it's normal that there are, uh, there's a, a small mobilization fee uh, 
maybe around 10% of the cost of the system, and that the remaining payments are made on a monthly basis. And so you avoid the big upfront payment that uh, the purchase model uh, requires. In essence, this model allows organizations to focus on their energy needs and leave it to companies to establish designs that will meet these requirements. When the organizations discuss options uh, with the company, they can specify the minimum amount of output that the system uh, should produce during the leasing period um, and thereby shift some of the financial uh, implications of underperformance of the systems back onto the solar company. The companies, the solar companies therefore have a, the incentive to make designs that will work well and perform according to the specification. If uh, long time batteries are used, for example, good quality lithium ion batteries, most of the kinks of the system should be addressed before the end of the lease, and a lot of the risk will then be taken out of the projects for the humanitarian organization. In, in many leasing models in, in more deep field location, we see that there is sometimes a, a shared responsibility for operations and maintenance, where, for example, the humanitarian organization takes on the, the cleaning of the panels, the simple jobs, and then the uh, solar company comes and do a more uh, regular um, maintenance on the on the system periodically um, the third model that we think is is quite interesting is the uh, power purchasing agreement or ppa and the principle here is that organizations fully step away from procuring a, a system itself to procuring electricity so these contracts often run from around three to ten years and um, if, if the organization wants to use a ppa for their own compound um so they're the only customer the it's normal that there's a a predetermined amount of electricity each month that they will pay for but the model also allow for more comprehensive options for example that the entire energy production from an organization is outsourced including the diesel generators so it's it will then be a complete system with solar batteries and, and diesel um, also, this model can be applied to settings where there are many organizations that are uh, in the same location um, and are connected in, in one grid. In, in both the situation with diesel and, and solar in, as one uh, sort of outsourced uh, service, and when there are many organizations on one grid, it's possible to move away from sort of having a predetermined amount of electricity and that organizations pay just per kilowatt hour that they use over a month. And, and so this is what will be closest to a, um, a utility service. So if you go to the next slide. And so the main considerations that, that we think should be included when, when deciding between these three models is first of all the level of tech technical expertise that the organization has do they have access to people that can help define the specifications of the system and can identify weaknesses in design or the components of the proposed systems if not we think that the uh, financed models the lease or the ppa is an attractive option the one other one is is financing if the organizations have access to donors or other financing mechanisms like loans um that this could uh, do make the purchasing available for them if not we think that leasing or ppa can be easier for the organizations to um to acquire uh, the third is, is procurement procedures many organizations have a limited ability to commit over time to a um, to financial payment obligations and if that's the case, that will make it difficult to, to enter into a lease or a PPA. And the final thing is operations and maintenance. Um, we see that many organizations underestimate the, the uh, work related to the operations and maintenance. And if so, we, we recommend that this is outsourced to other companies to make sure that, uh, that the system is performing optimally. So if we go to the next slide. Uh, this slide shows some of the pros and cons of each option, and we have placed them on, on a double axis, where depicting the availability of investment capital, and the other is the time horizon that the organization is considering. A third axis here could have been uh, the organization's willingness to take on technical responsibility. The figure shows that the purchase model can be, a great, can be great for organizations that have a lot of capital available, as a long time horizon up towards 10 years 
and a high willingness to take on technical responsibility. The lease is good for organizations that want to limit the technical risk and don't have the upfront investment capital. And the PPA is, is the cheapest option in the short run and does not require any upfront capital investment. And it's, it's the model that perhaps removes the most amount of technical risk from the, from the organization. If you go to the next slide. This slide shows the financial considerations and it also shows why sort of time horizon is quite important when deciding between the different models. The blue line and bar shows the costs relating to running um, an office on, on diesel generator. It, this is basically the cost for a, a medium sized office in a high cost environment like, uh, for example, South Sudan. The yellowish bar and the line represents the cost of, of buying a, a solar system. This option is by far the most energy intensive the first year. Uh, it is, but it, it's definitely what's likely to be the cheapest over a 10 year perspective. The leasing model represented in green shows the overall year, that the old, overall yearly cost for the first five years is quite stable. Then it drops quite considerably when the ownership of the asset is transferred to the organization. The PPA in the reddish line has the lowest cost from year one. It does have, have less significant price drop uh, after five years compared to the lease um, and will be more expensive than the purchase of option in a, in a 10 year perspective. If you go to the next slide. So that's a, a very short introduction to the three main options we think are most relevant for the humanitarian organizations. Uh, and as I said in the beginning, the solar handbook is available on our web page and provides much more detail. Uh, between the main differences and opportunity that each model has to offer. I'll be also be happy to answer any questions at the end of the webinar. Thank you.